I'm so excited to be here. What I'm about to share with you is a culmination of like three years of hands-on in the trenches with Facebook ads and probably about $10,000 in kind of self-education. I've literally flown across a continent to literally sit down with a guy for three days straight. Um, I'm gonna bring a lot of information. It's gonna come out really quickly. I speak quickly. No, at the end, I'm gonna give you guys a resource page on my website. It's gonna contain every single one of my slides and then it's gonna have bonus content. So if I'm in here talking about one of these little pieces and I jump to the next, and you're like, Miles, I need more on that. No, at the end, you can go to the slides on my site. You'll find links to my YouTube videos. I got YouTube videos that cover all the nuts and bolts. So what we're gonna do is kind of a high level cover of this strategy that I'm implementing at this point. Before we jump in, man, the team who's putting this together, like I don't know if you've ever put together an event, but this is amazing what they've pulled off. So if you wouldn't mind a quick round of applause for the volunteers, for the staff, for the sponsors. Ahrefs is a brilliant software tool for SEOs. I personally use Thrive Themes for all of my funnels and all of my Facebook ads go to a WordPress site on Thrive Themes. So I'm, I'm really impressed at what they have. Uh, last note before we jump in, there's a lot of different ways to run Facebook ads successfully. What I'm gonna show you is one way that has worked over and over for myself, for the people who taught this to me, and I've taught thousands of people this method in many different niches from e-commerce to info products. This stuff works. So let's jump right in. Okay, so who am I? Why should you pay attention? First of all, I don't have a course. I don't sell services. Put your guard down. I'm not here to kind of reverse pitch you into something or make it seem like I'm giving you information with the goal of selling something. I have generated over 150,000 leads for my business. Now, if I was an agency, that'd be a really small number and that wouldn't be very impressive. Uh, it's my wife and I, we run a very small information-based business. Uh, this has resulted in thousands of customers and it's about break even or better. This process takes an average of 10 minutes per day. So I'm constantly running ads. I haven't even looked at my ad account for like three days. Usually one day a month, I spend a half a day or so, and then every second or third day, I got five minutes in the ad account, and that's it. I'm able to really kind of be in and be out because the system works. The first thing, and this is probably the most important thing right here, um, you, you have to be a student of direct response marketing. There's, Facebook ads is like fuel, okay? And your business, if you just have a pile of sticks on the ground, and you pour gasoline on a pile of sticks, nothing's gonna happen. So you have to have that fire stoked, and that comes from direct response marketing. On the left, you're gonna see, or your right, excuse me, on the right, you're gonna see the recommended authors. These are old school direct response marketers. This is from the day of like direct mail, from magazine advertisements, and that is what all the great marketers are using today. I don't study many new school marketers when it comes to copywriting and advertising. I study the guys who published in the 1920s and the 1930s. You'll notice the big picture is this book. It's Breakthrough Advertising, which currently is selling for about $350 US. Now, rhetorical question, why are people paying $350 for this book? Partly because it's rare, right? It was written in the 1960s and it's been out of print. The other reason is because the ideas in this book are what can take you from $1,000 a day to $10,000 a day. This stuff can take you from $100 a day to thousands of dollars a day. And I'm giving away this book. This is a brand new one, so one of you are gonna win this book. And quick contest, all you have to do is put up a post on Instagram at Miles Beckler with hashtag Miles Beckler, and I'm gonna choose a winner. My wife's actually gonna choose a winner this afternoon, and I'll give this book away, which is that exact book. It's a brand new copy. So follow at Miles Beckler, give me a kind of a shout out and post something on Instagram, and we'll message you, we'll direct message you this afternoon. And the reason I'm giving you this right now, one person, is because I believe, I bought this with my own money, and I believe that this concept is the most important part for people to really invest in is the idea of becoming a direct response marketer. So that's the most important thing and that's a quick way for you to, to recoup your costs on the event if you wanna flip it or uh, make millions by going through the information. So what's required to run successful Facebook advertising? At minimum, you need two compelling authors. Your number one goal, this is so important, so many people get this wrong, you gotta be actually there to help people. 
Your product has to help people solve problems. Your intentions have to be in the right place. And when you truly build out your entire business and your funnels focused on helping solve people's biggest problems, everything seems to work. It's amazing. So offer number one would be a lead magnet or a front end offer. Really quickly, how many people in here are information marketers, coaches, membership programs? Cool, how many people in here do like physical products, Shopify stuff, and client services? How many people run for, cool, pretty fair swap. So the lead magnet is, that's how I run mine. I run information-based products. I give away a free item in exchange for their email address. That's the first compelling offer. If you're doing physical products, sometimes a free plus shipping offer or a really low price offer to get them in the door is going to be a key. Then offer number two, which is presented immediately after they take action on offer number one. So for me, I start with a lead magnet the next page, which is the thank you for subscribing page, I offer them something to purchase. I allow that small percentage of people who are ready to go deeper with my content, I give them the opportunity to purchase. 99% of people say no thank you, but that 1% of people who do take me on that, they actually pay for all of the ad spend for all those 99 leads that said no. So I get a net break even growth on mine. If you're running a front end offer on an inexpensive product, like a Shopify product, like if you've got a supplement and you're like, hey, get the first supplement free, just pay shipping. Then on your one click upsell, you would wanna sell more. Russell Brunson's great at this. He sells, um, he had a nootropics company for a while and he sold one, like get a trial size. When people purchase that trial size, the next page said, hey, you want a three month supply? And he literally sold them more of the same thing at a steep discount. Um, really trying to get that money on the back end. Your top priority is really actually a break even funnel. So when I'm putting in $100 and I'm getting out one $100 sale and 99 leads, I'm stoked. That's a million dollar business right there. So you don't need to be profitable on the front end. All the pros make their money on the back end. You build relationships with people who don't purchase from you. You sell more things to the people who do purchase from you and you really make your money on the back end of your funnel. And that to me is probably the, the biggest place that most people get into maybe a negative mindset with Facebook ads is they're like, oh, I'm not making money with my Facebook ads. And it's like, well, are you breaking even? Because if you're just breaking even, that could be enough literally to create a million dollar business. So I'm gonna go through a couple of funnel examples real quick and I'm gonna fly through these. Again, in the bonus content, I've got videos that go deeper into these ideas um, and I'll give you a link to that at the end. So a super simple self-liquidating -liqu offer. It's the opt-in, the one-time offer, and then you deliver it to them. This is how I started and this revolutionized my business. When I put this into place, it was, hey, do you want a free thing that's gonna help you solve this problem? They said yes. Now that prospect has, like they've scratched the proverbial itch. In their mind, even though they haven't consumed that content, in their mind they've solved that problem. So your OTO needs to be the next most logical problem for them, right? So um, if you're trying to always offer more of the same, some people are gonna get to your OTO and be like, wait a minute, I just, got, I just solved that problem with your free thing, why do I want more? Um, what we have is a free meditation and then we go into a deeper healing series, like a full comprehensive healing series. And that has proven to be uh, the kind of one, two punch for us. It's taken me a lot of testing. I test a lot of different offers in that OTO slot to see what works. I'm shooting for a one to 2% conversion rate. Um, once I dialed in that first funnel that you just saw, I expanded upon it. And the big expansion really came right here in this OTO upsell. So once they go through, they opt in, and then they get that same OTO and they check out. Once they check out, we leave that transaction open in the merchant account. And they go to another page that has a very short video, it's under three minutes, and it says, that's great, we got your order, it's coming to you. By the way, do you want this next most logical thing? and there's like a yes and a no button. And what this allows us to do is it increases our cart value. Facebook ads are getting more expensive. That, and it's going to continue this way. Google, if you know about the Google game back in the day, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about it. He was buying the click for wine for five cents and now it's $8 a click. Facebook is going that way. Luckily, we've got 2 billion people in the market and it's a slow evolution to get to that way. 
the way you're going to be able to keep up with that ad spend is by working your one-click upsells on the back end because that allows you to pay more for a customer and continue with your break-even funnel. So a quick example of this, let's say that I had a funnel course and that's what I was selling. So I give away a free, a free opt-in that's um, opt-in for, for seven secrets to high converting landing pages. And then they opt in and they say, great, that's on the way. Would you be interested in my entire funnels course? I show you the three funnels that I've used to generate a million dollars online, $47. They're like, yeah, that's great, Miles, I'll buy that. Cool, so then when that's open, I say on the next video, on my one-click upsell page, I'm like, great, your funnel product is on the way. Now, once you get your funnel figured out, the next problem that you're going to have is traffic. So why don't you go ahead and pick up my Facebook ads course so you can learn how to drive really relevant traffic to your funnel. I'll give it to you for a 60% discount today. It's normally 297, I'll do it for $97 right now. When it's structured logically and you're scratching that next itch and that next most logical thing for your visitor, they're really, really likely to buy and also, after they go through the checkout process, whether it's a $1 item, a $7 item, it doesn't matter. The conversation in their head changes from am I gonna buy something from this person to how much am I gonna spend with this person. You're in a buyer mode. There's a lot of psychological studies about this. The endorphins are running and people are much more likely to purchase a one-click upsell. Um, 20 to 30%, I would say. If you, put, if you don't have a one-click upsell and you add one and it's like, okay copy, like not even really good copy, you'll probably convert 20 to 30% of people and that's just literally straight to your bottom line. This is the membership funnel and this is absolutely, uh, I'm gonna have to change that from six figure membership funnel to seven figures pretty soon because this model is creating lifestyle wealth for my family. Um, what we're doing is we start with an opt-in for a free item, then we offer them a $1 trial to join our membership. It's a seven day trial for, for $1. After they check out, we offer them the ability to purchase a year at one time for a discounted price. The positioning on that one year upsell is super simple, it's super short. Let's use like a fitness example, right? Like so you, let's say they just bought a $1 trial to an online gym. You're like, hey great, that's awesome that you joined the gym, you're gonna get all the content, but really getting results with fitness, it takes time. And if you're willing to commit to me for a year, if you're serious about your fitness, I'll give you a special discount and I'll give you 60% off the year price right now. We see about 30, 35% of people taking us up on that one time offer, which gives us these huge injections of $197. Our membership is 37 a month. We do the annual for 197, which is like a $250 discount. I take all of that money and I dump it right back into Facebook ads. So what it does is it allows me to grow my Facebook advertising budget really quickly, and then I put it right back into more ads, which brings me more leads, which brings me more trial offers, and that becomes kind of a self-fulfilling system, and the byproduct is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people paying $37 per month. Uh, it's lifestyle business. When you start next month with $60,000 coming in, uh, you can think from a different level. All right. Do you notice we've been talking for like 15 minutes and haven't even gotten to Facebook ads yet? Interesting, right? Like Facebook ads is not a magic tool. Facebook ads is a traffic source. You have to have a funnel. You have to be able to convert traffic before Facebook ads is actually gonna do anything for you. I've got a video on this. I, I just, this is, so many people are getting accounts banned. Read the policies and procedures. Make sure you're not doing something that's clearly out of line. They will absolutely ban your account immediately. Um, go, if you don't have one yet, set up a business.facebook.com account. Probably all the ad agencies here already have those, but even for individual advertisers, it allows you to go create like four or five different Facebook ad accounts. So if they like ban your first one, you can start up another one and you're not completely locked out. You don't have to beg your friends to use their ad accounts because every person has one ad account. Cool, so we're ready to get into the Facebook ecosystem at this point. We've got our funnel built. We know where we're gonna bring people in. You gotta set up your tracking. The Facebook pixel is the first thing. It goes in the header of every page on your website, every step in your funnel. If you have a third party shopping cart, like Sam cart or whatever it is, um, it has to go on that as well. And then you set up your custom conversions. You wanna set these up to the main points in your funnel that you want to track. 
For me, when someone has become a lead, that's the first custom conversion I track. And then when someone becomes a customer, that's the second custom conversion I track. If you're doing a Shopify store, it might be add to cart, and then when they're a paid customer. Um, those are the two things I do. And then you gotta know your key performance indicators. You gotta know how much a lead is worth, like what you're willing to spend on a lead at break even, and you have to know what your cost per new customer is. This way you know whether your advertising is working or not. How do you figure out those numbers? Awesome. Don't be scared by the math. This is like fourth grade math. It's really simple. The first thing you do is figure out what is your front end profit from one new customer. If you're doing Shopify, eliminate your cost of goods sold, right? Like for me, I do digital products. I'm like 98% margin. So I just take how much I make from a new customer. But again, I have a one time offer and a one click upsell. So I need to find the average of those two. And that's my actual number is that average. So, and then you need to figure out how many leads it takes to create a new customer. And that is how many people who opt in and see your video sales letter or your sales letter, how many of those people purchase? With those two numbers, that's all you actually need. So if you're getting a half percent conversion rate, you need 200 leads to get a new customer. So at the bottom, I've got a, a super easy kind of example. If you make $100 profit from a new customer, and you need 200 leads, you need to be seeing 50 cent leads from Facebook to be break even. And if you're seeing 50 cent leads from Facebook break even, as long as like your site's not broken and everything else is actually working, user testing, just to make sure it's not broken, uh, you're gonna be good long term. And that's the power in this system. So now we're getting kind of deeper into the Facebook stuff. There's a tool that Facebook has called the Audience Insights Tool. It's probably the best market research tool ever created for marketers. It gives us access to all of the scary data that Facebook has on every one of us. And it allows you to look inside. Um, so there's two ways you can use it. Number one, you can just look at all of Facebook and you can say, if you're in the golf niche, you can say, okay, people who like Tiger Woods, what other things do they like? Another way you can use that tool is you can upload your customer list or you can upload your leads list and you can get Facebook's feedback on them and they'll show you, ah, your customers also like this author and this blogger and they like this TV show. And you can actually target those interests that it shows you so your advertisements display to those interests. What this allows you to do is go beyond demographics, right? You're no longer advertising to 44 year old women you're also able to say 44 year old women who really like this book, because everyone who buys that book has the problem that I solve, right? So you can get so specific into the mindset. So what I recommend people do is get in the Facebook insights tool and create a list of 30 interests that are hyper relevant to your target market. Relevance is everything. I don't care if you're doing SEO. I don't care if you're doing Facebook ads. Relevance is absolutely everything. Facebook has 2 billion plus monthly active users. So you really need to identify the ones who have shown some sort of action, clicking the like button, that really, really signifies that they are interested in what you have. I've got a really comprehensive video on this uh, that you can see on the slides and I walk you through screen share style, like click here, do this, click here, do this to, to learn this tool. All right, how you guys doing so far? Are we staying awake? Am I going too quick? High five your neighbor and be like, F yeah. Let's see some high fives around. Cool. Rock on. The next thing you gotta do is leverage your assets. So it's, it's easier to sell to people who've already bought from you. And most people forget about this. So if you already have kind of a business that's growing, you're like, Miles, I have a fire. I want to pour fuel on my fire. Leverage your assets first. Sell more to your past customers. Sell coaching, create membership programs, running events, whatever it is. Find more things, higher ticket items, to sell to people who already purchased from you. You can re create retargeting audiences. If you haven't, so if you have a big list of customers and you haven't reached out to them in a while, you can start with a thank you campaign, just a video of you being like, thanks, you bought my stuff, that was awesome, thank you. And you just give that touch point on Facebook and you're able to set your ads to where when somebody engages, so if they click like, they say thank you, they won't see the ad again. And it's a great way to warm them up for kind of future advertising. 
So making custom audiences from your email list and your customer lists, you upload them, Facebook takes your list and says, okay, 90% of these people are on Facebook. You can target them and you can also exclude them. So when you're running cold traffic ads, you can make sure your ads aren't displaying to people who are already on your list. You can make lookalike audiences. How many people are familiar with what a lookalike audience is? Out of curiosity. Cool, about half the room. So they're really freaking cool. All right, so a lookalike audience, when I upload my customer list of 2,000 people, and you need to upload about 1,000 users for this to work, then I can tell Facebook, here's the profile of my best customers, right? And I, I choose my best customers. I'm using the people who buy my OTOs, not all customers, because I want more people who buy my OTOs to show up on my, for my ads. So I say, here you go, Facebook. Facebook will go out and find the 1% of the population in a specific country most like that user profile based on the 160 plus data points that Facebook's storing on each and every one of us. So what that means is Facebook's able to say, okay, 2,000 people, they all kind of, they like Oprah, they like that, they like this, okay, cool. And then Facebook will go out and put a list of 2.1 million people in the United States of America who are most similar to that customer audience that I just put, and I can run an advertisement to them, knowing who they are. I can also add on my interests from what we talked about before to narrow that audience even more and make sure there's even more specificity. Excluding people who have already taken the action is really important. We want to exclude our customers. You don't want your ads displaying to your customers. You don't want your ads to display to your leads. Another exclusion audience I'm using a lot now is an exclusion audience that allows me to exclude anyone who has engaged with any of my posts. This means when my ad pops up, if somebody hits the angry face, they'll never see the ad again. They're excluded because they engaged. If someone clicks the like button or comments, they're excluded, so it limits the frequency so I don't keep showing the ad to the same people who already showed up over and over and over again. This gives me a longer kind of lifespan of my audience. Um, if you're doing Shopify or, any, or if your clients are doing Shopify and selling physical products, retargeting ad to cart and website visitors. I mean, somebody who was on your shopping cart, a lot of times when people don't buy, there's usually two reasons. Number one, something distracted them. We all live in very distracted worlds. So like, you know, mom's sitting there on her phone about to order the widget from your store. And then like the kid comes in like bloody because they fell off their bike. And all of a sudden mom has to put down the phone and she's now taking care of the kid and she totally forgot about you. And what's she gonna do once the kid's okay? She's gonna go post a picture of it on Facebook. And if your ad shows up right there to remind her she wanted your thing, the odds of you saving that sale go up significantly. Um, messenger ads can be done really well here. I'm still testing with messenger ads. I don't know if I like them because they're kind of creepy. And being creepy is, is breaking one of the rules of internet marketing. So choosing the right campaign type. I love the website conversion campaigns. Now a website conversion campaign is the only campaign that allows you to leverage Facebook's machine learning system. What is this? So Facebook has an AI running that tracks what each and every one of us are doing. Facebook knows if you purchase online, and we probably, we're probably we all probably hyperactive online purchasers, but Facebook has pixels on millions of websites, and they're tracking each and every one of us, and they know who clicks the like button a lot, they know who clicks on articles a lot, they know who purchases things online a lot. When you use the website conversion campaign, you can leverage that knowledge and when you say, I want people to convert to a lead, Facebook's like, great. This group of people on Facebook, they convert a lot. I'll show your ad to these types of people. Versus when you run an engagement-based campaign, Facebook's like, cool, this group of people engage. They click the like button a lot. We'll show your ad to the people who click the like button. We don't want likes. You can't go to a bank and deposit likes. We deposit cash from conversions. That's why we want to focus on conversion-based advertisements. You need to have 50 conversions per week per ad set to seed their machine learning with enough data to go find you more. Did that make any sense? Came out pretty smooth. So their machine learning system is like, cool, we have to show them the type of person we want. Right, so I focus my ads on the lead level. 
when someone opts into my list, that is the action that I want Facebook to go find me more of. So that's what I do. I set my conversion pixel at the lead. Now, if I was trying to set my conversion pixel at the sale, and my average customer value is about $105, that would mean I'd have to be ready to spend $5,000 per week in ads in hopes to get my 50 conversions. And the odds are I'd have to go over that because the more you spend on Facebook, the faster they waste your money. Uh, it's pretty amazing how that works. So what I'm getting at is you don't always want to set the website conversion pixel to the sale. If you're doing Shopify, maybe that add to cart is where you're getting 50 per week without like breaking the bank. Um, I like to set it up at the lead level because pros make their money on the back end. We email them, we follow up, we build the relationship, we nurture that lead, and effectively that's how we grow our business. You can use engagement campaigns for retargeting and for contests. That's a really good way. Um, so if you've got a contest, you're giving away, I don't know, a free book on Instagram. Free book, give it what you're saying. Um, so you can, you can kind of get the engagement to, to boost the virality. Some products that have a viral nature can use engagement campaign. Anybody know about Chubby's shorts? So the American in the back. So Chubby, it's an American uh, garment company. They, they make these really ugly shorts that show off way too much of guys' legs. But they created these videos that are hilarious and they just kick their videos to viral and that's how they've grown their entire brand. So it's possible, but I like the machine learning system because I need the numbers. I'm a direct response marketer. I need to know I get 100 leads, I get one sale, that one sale maybe 100 bucks, all of that cost me $100. I'm not out of pocket, let's do it again and again and again. Messenger ads for cart abandonment and mid sales for high ticket long sales process. Messenger ads are you're literally popping up in people's message box. Um, it should be used very, very cautiously and you need to make sure that your, your bot that's running it, because it runs on a bot on a third party platform, you need to make sure it's like great English and it's actually answering people's questions because if it's done wrong, you're gonna burn your brand value in an absolute instant. Um, I, I'm kind of a website conversion person. So this brings us to, to the model, right? So we've got our website conversion campaign. That's the first actual thing that we've built. Then you go into your ad sets. And the way I run my ad sets is I am essentially split testing every single interest, lookalike audience, and retargeting audience against each other. So I have one website conversion campaign, and then I duplicate out the ad sets. And in each ad set, there is one either interest retargeting campaign or lookalike campaign. What we're trying to do here is I want to know if author A, blogger B, TV show C, which one of those are gonna give me leads and customers within my KPIs. The ones that don't, they get turned off. The ones that do either stay the same or I increase that $5 ad budget per day, I bump it up to 10 and then I monitor it. Then I bump it up to 15 and then I monitor it. I bump it up very, very small amounts when I'm within my KPIs. If you jump, if you're like, whoa, that ad set worked at five bucks, 100 bucks a day. Uh, Facebook just magically spends your money. I don't know why, I don't care why. I've tested it enough, that's just how it works. They have investors to pay and it just disappears. So small incremental growth. I find that I'm good bumping it $10, $15 per ad set up to about $100. At that point, I really let it settle for two to three days. I always want to, with the website conversions, I always want to give Facebook a few days to find that audience. Because what you're doing is you're saying, Facebook, here's an audience of two million people, go find me leads. Facebook's gonna kind of like, well, what about these people? And what about that type of person? And so they're gonna kind of jump around within your audience to different segments. It can take a day or two for you to get the good results. So when I start a new campaign, I let this run for, generally speaking, uh, two to three days before I make any executive decisions. Um, and I like to let it run up until I have spent as much as I would make from a new customer in an ad set. I'll show you that with the numbers here pretty soon. This is just kind of a visual representation of what I'm talking about. So it's one campaign that houses all of the different ad sets each ad set has one interest, one retargeting audience, or one lookalike audience, and they all point to the same advertisement. 
now what this does is it allows you to kind of leverage all of that social engagement you're gonna get on your ad from all of the different ad sets. If each ad set had its own ad, then you might end up with one ad having like seven likes, the next one having 13 likes. But if you run this method long enough and you've got 30 ad sets, right? And 30 ad sets at $5 a day is $150 a day. If you're getting 10 cents clicks, it's a lot of numbers going through. You're gonna get a lot of likes, you're gonna get a lot of comments. I've got one ad, it's got like two, some, two point something million views. Um, like thousands of likes, thousands of comments. And when that ad shows up on people's uh, pages, there's a little more there. They're able to read through the stories. They see all the hearts, all the thumbs up, and it really impacts them a little bit more. So when you're in the ad level, there's just like a button that you click. Uh, I've got a video that shows you how to do it. And it just says, um, use existing ad. And you just pop the ad ID in. So let's talk about ads. How do you get an ad that gets a high relevance score? And probably a better question is, what the hell is a relevance score? So a relevance score is, all right, Facebook's an auction, right? So imagine if I was auctioning off something right now, there's gonna be one winner in the room. So the Facebook advertising auction works the same way. When you enter an audience as an advertiser, there's one winner and then there's everyone else who's losers. You want to be the one winner and you know you've got that when you get a relevance score of 10. And when you get a relevant score of 10, that means you're getting the least expensive clicks, the least expensive CPMs, and they're displaying your advertisement to the highest quality of traffic. Because if you've got a relevant score of three, Facebook's like, this guy sucks. Like, I'm not gonna show him to my really good people, right? He's gonna get that kind of that traffic that's you know on VPNs from some other country. So getting a high relevant score is key, so how do you do it? Well, first of all, what does Facebook measure in a high relevance score? So they're gonna measure the audience that you're targeting, they're gonna measure your copy on your advertisement, and then they actually go to your landing page and they look at the words on your landing page. And they want to see that that audience has relevance to the text in your ad and that has relevance to what's on your landing page. They don't go beyond the landing page. So they don't go to the second step in your funnel, they don't go deeper than your landing page, they're just scanning your landing page so you need the words, the topics to be a match, right? And when they are, you get kind of a leg up on the rest. The other trick, and this is what I've been doing, is long text ads. Long text ads, you can see over here, we've got this more button on the, the bottom of the first one on Todd Brown's. So what that does is you're essentially feeding Facebook's algorithm with a lot of words. And it's easier to get a good relevant score when you have lots of words, right? If you've got a seven word ad, Facebook's like, oh, I don't really know what this is about. It's just like, click by, yay, thank you, you know? But this, it's clearly like he's talking about, hi Todd here, how to create a marketing funnel, acquire new customers, lead magnet. You know, he's got all those keywords, marketing funnels again, acquire new customers, all those keywords. Facebook knows that's, relevance to the, that's relevant to the audience he's reaching out to. And then he's got his link one thing that, that um, you've all probably seen it, you're, we're only seeing about this much of these at first, right? So they, these, I've already clicked a, more, a see more button, and then there's another more button. My best ad, the one I was telling you that has the great engagement, I think there's like 400 words of copy above there. And it's this long story. It's, it's a story in my wife's voice, and it's like, I felt like my world was crumbling around, around me, and then this happened, and then I went here, and we tell these stories, story-powered marketing, I think we have to talk about that soon, and we tell these stories that um, engage our people. People are bored. People are absolutely bored in their lives. So using storytelling and telling stories that can get them to be like, wow, she's just like me, you're gonna increase the likelihood of them converting. So these three ads, there's three different things going on. I, my ad is most similar to Todd Brown's. There's a lot of text on top. I don't do, the, I don't do a link up here. My link's at the very, very bottom of that. Um, I like the learn more button at the bottom. And really this headline down here is probably one of your most important little pieces of copy. And that's going back to the, the copywriting books. Uh, Victor Schwab has a book called How to Write a Good Advertisement. I think it was published in 1944. And he analyzes 100 of the best um, advertisements ever. And it's so important to remember that human nature has not changed since the 1940s. Uh, the means in which we communicate with each other have. So having a great headline down here that's really gonna jump out and connect with your people is super important. For imagery, I don't really use things that look like ads. Uh, my best image that's working right now is a picture of my wife kind of with her hand on a tree, like hanging out with a tree. And there's a tree in the story we talk about. 
So just, just really pictures, things you would expect to see on Facebook. You want it to fit in so when someone's like scrolling on their Facebook timeline, if it screams ad and it's got borders and it's buy now, 20% off, they're like, I don't want to fucking advertise it, come on. But when it's like dude eating a kebab or something, right? Like it's just, you're like, well, what is this? It, that looks like what would normally pop up on a Facebook feed. The third ad over here, Ryan Levex, this is a brilliant example. So if you're doing a retargeting to people who have been to your shop, shopping cart, generally it's a distraction. I didn't tell you what the second thing was, why people don't convert, and it's because they don't have enough information. So this ad, the three reasons why ad is what marketers call it. It's such a powerful ad for you to be able to kind of reintroduce people and talk about or talk to the objections they maybe had because they just don't know enough yet to pull the trigger. So I think that three reasons why is a great kind of an ad style if you're retargeting people who were at your shopping cart level. Another thing you can do if you're retargeting people from your shopping cart is testimonials. Uh, one of my buddies in New Zealand, he, one of the last ads he runs when he's closing the cart to his boot camp, it's just got like 15 testimonials. And like, that's it. It's just literally customer testimonial after customer testimonial all the way down. And that ad actually gets really good conversions for him. All right, analyzing data. Who loves data in the room? Where's my data nerds? We gotta have at least a few of them. Yeah, the, the magic is truly in the data. And Facebook's pretty good at overwhelming us with data. So I'm gonna try to make this really simple. And earlier when I said it takes me 10 minutes a day on average, so the setup process to get everything going takes you know about a half day, uh, maybe once a month, once every two months. Other than that, I get my cup of coffee in the morning, I go sit down, I go into my ad manager, I go to the ad set level up top, and the first thing I do is I look at this bottom line here. That's all I care about at first is the bottom line. Because all I really want to know is what's my cumulative results of everything combined. And this one you're seeing here, I believe I've got like 73 ad sets running at the same time. And they're varying probably between five and 20 or $30 a day is how this is working. So what you need to do is up here in the columns custom, you click on that and you customize your columns and you need to add your custom conversions. So I've got my opt-in number, my cost per opt-in, my new customer number, and my cost per new customer. That's all I really actually need. I would recommend that you add on your relevance score and your negative feedback and your positive feedback. That only shows on the ad set level, uh, at the ads level, not here at the ad set level. And that's just to monitor. If things aren't working and your numbers are consistently out of whack, I'd probably bet money. I'd, I probably actually would bet a half an ether on it um, that you've got a really low relevance score. That's usually the key indicator, and that usually means that somewhere your messaging is just mismatching. Your audience is off, your message is off, your landing page is off. Um, that's their indicator. So, we know our numbers from earlier, right? We did the simple math. We know exactly what it would cost for a new customer. We know that number, and then we know what our cost per lead, what our target cost per lead is. So for me in this, I'm about $105. You can see right down here, my average from all of these is $106.92 per customer. So that means I'm paying about $1.92 for 88 customers. Sweet. All day long, happy to pay $1.92 for 88 customers. My other one, so my CPL at this point was 81 cents. Now I'm down to about 66 cents on my new funnel. This is uh, the last funnel that I ran. So this was, I was at an 81 cent cost per action at my cost per lead, my target cost per lead. And this means to me that I'm pretty close to break even. What you're not seeing at the very bottom is there's a lot of ad sets that are turned off. And you're gonna log in at some point and you'll be like, okay, I need 50 cent leads and $100 customers. And you're gonna see like 148 and you're gonna see like 75 here. And you're like, okay, I'm cash flow negative. So what you do is you scroll through your ad sets and you find the ones with the highest cost per and you remove them. So for me right here, this one that's over a dollar, I would just come over here and turn that one off. And then, ooh, actually, this is a really good example. So the first place I look is the cash in the bank. And the reason I just stopped myself there is because I'm actually getting four customers at $69 each, so I wouldn't turn that one off. I don't actually care about what my cost per lead is on this one because of the fact that I'm getting really, really, really good cost customers here. So the first thing I would do is I'm looking over here for, for ones that are out of KPI, and I would scroll down until I find them, I would turn them off. Up here, there's a little filter button. I probably should have kept that in there. And you can filter by active. 
So once you turn a couple of them off, filter by active, refresh the page, and then look at the bottom again and see if your bottom line is back within your KPIs. And the reason I'm only looking at my bottom line being within KPIs is because I want as many leads and customers as I can. Some are gonna have great numbers and they're gonna be below my KPIs. Some are gonna have so-so numbers that are above my KPIs. And it's the average of all of that that I'm really truly after in this. So focusing down here at the bottom line is really the key. When you launch your ads, you're gonna have no customers. And you might not have customers for a week or two. Let's say you're doing $5 a day and you have a $100 product. And how long do you wait? This is kind of the big question. Like, how do you know when to start turning things off? So what you're doing, if you're doing $5 a day and you're expecting a $100 customer, you could potentially run that ad for 20 days before seeing a single sale. And when that one sale comes in on day 20, you could be cash flow break even on that whole thing. If that sale comes in on day 18, you'd be cash flow positive by $10 on that customer. So the first thing you need to do is you need to be willing to let your ads run long enough for you to spend as much as you would make on a new customer. Until that point, you're monitoring your cost per lead. And that's why you know your cost per lead. So when I launch new campaigns, I'm only looking at my cost per lead. And actually at this point, I'm, I'm okay with being cash flow negative on my, my cost per customer because our email marketing and the lifetime value of our leads, I know what that number is. But if you don't know what that lifetime value is, you start by focusing on your cost per lead first. And then when you've had enough money spent here, right? So $277, like I should at least see two sales there. And that's how I decide which ones I turn on, which ones I turn off. And I let them run eventually ad sets die out and eventually this is going to get to a point where I've got three or four left and I'm going to turn it all off and I'm just going to start the process over again. I have, sometimes I put the exact same audiences in and sometimes audience A in campaign one flops and then I run that exact audience in a campaign three weeks later and for some reason it magically gives me numbers within my KPIs. Facebook is always moving, it's all over the place. One of the biggest things I've learned is not to ask why, because uh, that's just gonna drive you insane, because Facebook does what it wants. Uh, but I just, I continue to test things, I retest things over and over, and that's been one of the biggest ways for me to kind of find this methodology. Um, I'm gonna take some questions at the end. I feel like this might be kind of the part of the heavy part. Um, I got maybe one more slide left. How y'all feeling? Yeah, do we have enough coffee to get through the rest of this, or? All right. So. Once you're running the process, that's when you can get into optimization mode. So split testing your one-time offer is huge. And that's what I did. I didn't run a one-click upsell. I just ran opt-in, one-time offer. And I worked with those two pages for probably about a year until my opt-in page got about a 48% conversion rate. And I'm getting about a one-ish percent right now on my one-time offer. I've had lower price one-time offers get higher conversion rates, but with a higher priced one-time offer at a lower conversion rate, I make more money. So you gotta test it, right? I've tested as low as $7 one-time offers all the way up to $97 one-time offers. Um, ad copy and headlines, right back to that direct response marketing stuff. Adding one-click upsells. So once you get this going, or if you're like, man, I'm trying to get customers for 100 bucks each, I can, get, I can only do it for 130 or 150 or 170, and you're always cash flow negative, throw one click upsell on the back end. And that can totally change the numbers throughout your entire funnel. That's the shortcut, that's what all the pros do. If you look at Russell Brunson, he's giving away a free book, right, that costs you $7. His average cart value on that's something like $48 because he sells a $150 traffic course on the back end of that. Um, Everyone who's advertising something that looks cheap, they're actually making a lot of money on the back end, and that's your competition. So you gotta get comfortable putting those upsells on. At first, my wife and I, we were uncomfortable selling right after the click. We're in the meditation space. Like some people are like, oh, spirituality, you charge for that stuff. And we had a total mental block, like, ooh, I don't know, people are gonna probably hate on this. No one complained. We put it in place, no one complained, and we started making more money, and it literally revolutionized our business. Um, testing this stuff, that's how I was able to pay off $50,000 in student loans in like eight months, was because we dialed in a funnel that worked, we pumped the money right back into it, and it just became this machine that spit out leads and customers. Uh, your long-term target KPIs, I think you wanna see a 3% click-through rate. This is not an all number, this is literally add to landing page. You know your ad's doing really well when you're getting about 3% of Facebook visitors over to your website. 
40 plus percent opt-in rate, you're probably gonna, if you're just starting, you're probably gonna start out around 25%, I think is good, and then a two plus percent conversion rate. Um, we're constantly writing new video sales letters. It's a huge pain in the neck. It's the, like it's a massive process to write a really good video sales letter. Um, but when you get one that works, you can run it for years and you can make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars with it. Um, we are, oh yeah, not done yet. <laughs> Email your list more. So my wife and I, anybody heard of Ben Settle? The Antipreneur Show. So he's all about email every day. He's a little crass. I don't recommend his paid products, but he, he's all about email your list every single day. My wife challenged herself to do a 30 day challenge emailing her list every single day. Boom, people loved it. And we thought like, ooh, people are gonna unsubscribe. Very few people unsubscribed. Most people in this world are bored out of their effing minds. They hate their lives. They want to live vicariously through us. We live very interesting lives, share stories. If you're working with brands and products, figure out a way to tell stories from the brand perspective. And if that doesn't make sense, you're like, well, I have a software product. Go to ClickFunnels and watch the video that's on ClickFunnels. Some big fat like gold miner guy and they do this whole story about gold mining and panning for gold and how that somehow relates to a software company Find a way to tell stories and tell those stories through email. Most people aren't gonna buy your stuff on day one, that's okay, but if you follow up with them effectively, they might buy in the future. Always, always, always give more value than you ask for. Give, 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 build the relationship. Be willing to give results in advance to your audience. That's how you help people become customers. This is why I'm totally cool running cash flow negative ads on Facebook now. Because we make so much money from our list at this point. When we make new offers, when we mail old offers, we mail affiliate offers, we do all kinds of stuff. And it's always well received because it's, it's usually within a part of a story, it's usually a part of a bigger context, and there's a relationship there. Here's the free resources. Um, this one right here. So if you go to this page, milesbeckler.com forward slash DMSS, it'll actually link you to these. And I've got all the slides and then below the slide, when I have a relevant video that shows you all the nuts and bolts, um, that's where you're gonna get those videos that go deeper. Literally, I think on that page, I probably link to eight, nine, 10 hours of free training on Facebook uh, pay-per-click advertising. So literally like I'm in the ad manager showing you exactly where to click, exactly what to do. I try to condense, you know, six weeks of training into an hour. So that's it. Um, one more call to action on my end. I am giving away the free breakthrough advertising. Just go on Instagram, take a picture. Um, my wife's gonna choose one. It doesn't have to be engagement based, something fun, something funny, make her laugh and you'll win the book. And uh, really it's, I really think this is it, to be honest. The idea of becoming a direct response marketer changed my world and literally saying, hey, do you want this free thing? And people said, yeah, be like, okay, you wanna buy this thing? Okay, you wanna buy this thing? And people kept saying yes, and it was like, oh, this is amazing. And they're grateful for the opportunity to buy when you do it correctly. And that's how you know you've got a really, really sustainable business that allows you to do some cool stuff in life. So that's it for the presentation. Um, let's do some questions. And I'm sure we got a few people interested because um, this is kind of a heavy topic. So fire away, let's do, I'll do questions as long as they'll let me be up here. Hi, uh, thanks Miles. Uh, Cheers. First of all, that was probably the best talk I've been to this weekend. Thank you. That's my goal, man. Ad set. If you've got 30 ad sets, yeah. how are you getting 50 conversions per ad set for Facebook to work out? Right. So for me, particularly, it's because I'm focused on the lead level and I'm getting leads for 60 to 80 cents each. So you do the math and it's like 30 bucks a week each, 30 to 50 bucks a week each, so I can have all my ad sets running. So if you're, if you, like number one, have a really high ticket product on the back end, always helps. You know, people who seem to have $2,000 products can spend a lot more than people who have $14 products. Um, but finding, finding the step in your funnel that's not exactly the checkout, but it's one step beyond the page they landed on. So if you're on Shopify, they're gonna land on a sales page, or do you do physical products or? Uh, info products, but I do have like a thank you page after the opt-in. That's it. And I'm experimenting with running like a one-time offer versus sending them to like a bigger cart open sequence so yep. they get yeah, testimonials. So I would, I would hit that one page right there and I would monitor that, that's it. And it, 
because of that triggering 50. We used to only have to have 25 until like two weeks ago. Um, but you want to seed it, and honestly, I think you want to seed it with more. Like 100 or more would be better, because the more data you give them, the clearer of a picture of that persona from their data, and the better traffic they can give you. Um, but yeah, it, so it just like, where are they going to land? What's that one step they can take? And use that as your custom conversion is what I would try. Thank you. Cheers. Back. Hey. Yep. Uh, thanks for the talk. Cheers. Uh, so um, I was wondering if you uh, ever run anything else than a website conversion? Anything other than? Yeah. At this point, no. In the past, I definitely have. Uh, I've done cost per click, um, lead ads I was doing for a while. And like lead ads are great. I was getting a great cost per lead, but you don't control where they go after they go through the lead process. They have a button that's like, hey, you want to visit the website? And it's like, no, no, no. I want them to see an offer that next moment. And that's the direct response marketer in me because I need to get my ad spend back as quickly as I possibly can so I could put it back into tomorrow's ad budget. Um, so for me, the only one I'm using right now is website conversion. I'm interested in testing the, the messenger ads a little bit, but I haven't figured out a way to do it that doesn't seem like super creepy. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a one trick pony. When I find something that works, I just pfft, blinders on, ignore the emails of what's special. What do we got here? I, I, um, that's actually pretty similar then. You mentioned retargeting yep. ads cart campaigns. So yep. you do a conversion campaign on that as well? Absolutely. Yep, and I would use the same conversion metric because and, you're going to send them to a sales page. You're not going to send them back to the actual cart. That would be a little bit too much. So you're going to send them a sales page, and you want to make sure they're yeah, the taking that step. And then what you can focus on is like split testing your checkout page, right? Because if you're finding that like only four percent of people are buying, like you have an issue on your checkout page, right? If you keep introducing people that checkout and they're clicking the buy button. Like oh, user testing, something's broken, and it could be button color, like button color on page one versus button. Like you change the button from from orange to green, or like it can be something subtle, um, but there there's something wrong there. And I think split testing that checkout page would be my focus. Yep. Hey, thanks for the talk again. Uh, for the conversion optimization, like Facebook had this thing. Seven day conversions, yep. one day yep. uh, conversions, and then um, what was the other thing? Like first optimize for clicks and then optimize for conversion. Did you like test this? Does this is really give any change? Because I, it's hard to find any information. On totally. And it's really difficult to run a scientific test because you're always going to have different audience segments. I leave, I let Facebook do all the bidding. So pretty much on the ad set level, when I get down below interest and I get to all that bidding, I leave it 100% default what they put in. I believe it's seven day and straight to the conversion is what it's at, but I literally don't even know what it's set to because I let it be the default. I used to do manual bidding. I used to go really deep into that and a coach convinced me to try, let them run it and my CP, all my numbers went down. And I thought for sure Facebook was going to spend more of my money than they needed to, but surprisingly, they actually got me a better deal than I could get manually. So I was like, okay, cool. Focus on the copy. Over you. Yeah. Uh, hey, Miles. Um, so there is this software that's been promoted on Facebook guys lately that's Companion Labs, and it kind of does manual bidding. Do you have experience with it? None. And I don't like doing any third party softwares that plug in. Some people love Ad Espresso, there's Quaya that lets you kind of do something similar to this. But I'm like, Power Editor is all I use. I try to really just kind of use what Facebook gives us because at some point, the API is going to break. At some point, Facebook's going to be tired of them. Just like Instagram did with all the bots that used to run there. Like, like I just, Facebook's one of those weird ecosystems that I, I just buy into what they do and it's a pain in the ass and they change it all the time and it's disturbing. Especially when I have videos out there, Miles, it changed. What, you can make a new video? It's like, ah. Oh. But yeah, I just I really just commit to their tools because I think that long term I'm going to be better off as a marketer, not relying on a third party. And manual bidding, bidding in general. Is some people are all about it, and some people even talked smack about me uh, not doing manual bidding. And until I'm out of my KPIs and can't figure how to get back in my KPIs, I'm going to let Facebook run all my bidding. If I just couldn't get into my KPIs and I felt my conversion numbers, like I was showing you, were good. I would consider getting into manual bidding, um, but at this point, I don't need to. My time is more valuable on other parts of, of the business. Um, yeah. Hello, thanks. Yeah, man. So you explained how relevance uh, score works when yep. you send the traffic to a landing page. Right. Do you know how it works when you send traffic to the, to the center? 
No, I don't. Yes. Like, what, what do they uh, track in order? So obviously, it would just be the audience and the ad copy itself. And so interesting on that, Frank Kern's got a, do you follow Frank Kern? So I would recommend going to Frank Kern's website and then going back to try to get a retargeting pixel on. He's running a messenger ad that looks like a regular conversion ad. So it's got long copy up top with links to a landing page, but then it's got the messenger functionality below. So he's playing kind of both games with one ad set, which is pretty nifty. Um, but I really, I really try not to change my approach much. I really like until my KPIs, until there's a dire reason, like I don't even do Instagram ads. Oh, how do you not do Instagram ads? Because I'm crushing it on Facebook and that would distract me, right? Like distraction is the enemy for all of us in our business and really finding kind of one thing that works. And what's cool is I've taught this to hundreds of people. I've even had some dude here at the party uh, first night. Is he here? He was like, Miles, I started doing your Facebook thing and my, I'm doing 40 grand a month and then I started doing 60 grand a month just following your Facebook ad stuff. So this stuff works. And until it stops working, I'm just gonna keep doing it. Cheers. Yep. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Just a little question. Um, so you're selling people to landing page, basically you want to convert them. Uh, I'm into content marketing, right? Yeah. So I'm much more interested in what would be your take on uh, advertising content using Beautiful. Facebook. Absolutely. So that's, um, I got a video called the two-step advertising method on Facebook. And you can kind of like step one, send them to a piece of blog content that really primes the pump for them to be super interested in what you sell. The blog post can talk about the problem and the solution and a case study and somebody who went through that process. And then once they go back to Facebook after having consumed that piece of content, you can then offer them the opt-in that takes them into a really targeted funnel. And if you want a kind of an advanced hack on that, you can use Facebook's pixel manager and you can time delay the pixel from loading. Right, so what I'm saying is you can make sure that person not just lands on your blog post, that they spend at least 45 seconds on your blog post, then the Facebook pixel fires from the Google Tag Manager, and then when they go back to Facebook, they're gonna see the ad for the funnel. So you eliminate all the tire kickers who just showed up to your page and clicked back. Um, most of my leads come from retargeting organic SEO visitors from our content marketing efforts. And that's, I think, part of why this works so well for us. Um, I'm doing a lot of cold traffic also. I mean, you saw how many campaigns. My retargeting was one line on that bigger spreadsheet. Um, but yeah, the two-step is great. And also, have you done an advertorial? Are you familiar with what advertorials are? It's a style of content that reads a lot like a blog. It's kind of long text copy, but then it goes into uh, like a sales pitch at the end. So it's an advertisement editorial, advertorial. Um, that's the stuff these guys used to do. They'd buy full page ads in newspapers in the 1940s with this big advertorial and that's how they made hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in the 40s and 50s and 60s. And that's why I study that stuff because like the old school, the, like there's so many ninja tactics and there's so many people trying to like make money off of you and they're trying to hit your inbox and let you make you think that this new copywriting hack is the hack. All they're doing is regurgitating what these five, six authors are doing and really studying what, what worked in the slow delivery snail mail of the 1960s. When you get that, um, it just, then you look at everybody who's crushing it online, you're like, oh, they're doing what they did in the 60s. They're just using digital media instead of old school media. Um, but I, I love the, the two-step campaign. I think it's a really good idea. You just gotta monitor your numbers. So you would have to add, like there's ad set one that's getting the click to your blog. And then there's your second ad set that is the click to the landing page. So you can't just take that number from the second ad set as your cost per lead. You gotta factor in how much you cost for that first click over. Um, but it, when that works, it's great because they're warm. You've warmed them up and then you offer them something. Wow, what a great presentation. Why Thank you guys. Cheers, man. Appreciate it. Yep, thanks.